Okay guys, so I got a 2013 Ranger 900 here. Gonna be doing a belt change. Uh, this is a fairly simple job. It's pretty much just taking a few things off and uh, putting the belt on. The hardest part is the belt. Uh, it really doesn't uh, wanna come off and the new belt doesn't wanna go on. It's kind of uh, a real tough fit. That's really the hardest part of this job. Okay, so why am I changing my belt? Why do I think I got a problem? Um, right now I have a very jerky start. Um, if you guys have driven a clutch, it's almost like when you slip it really bad. That's kind of what it feels like, really jerky. Um, I know Polaris machines, they're not the smoothest when you change directions forward and reverse and change gears. But uh, this is kind of ridiculous uh, how jerky this is. In high range, it really feels like you're just like riding a clutch and it's, it's just grabbing and not grabbing. So um, it, it's pretty bad. That's why I'm, I'm changing the, the belt. Okay, so you would think that uh, with only a thousand, just over a thousand miles on this thing, it wouldn't need a belt change. But if the previous owner abused the machine, or just didn't use the right gears in the right situations. Um, you can ruin a belt pretty quickly on these. But anyway, I'm gonna go through this. You're not gonna see me unbolting stuff and bolting stuff back on. It's gonna be kind of like uh, Haynes manual style. So here we go, guys. Okay, so the tools that I used on this job is um, a screwdriver, I got a long extension, quarter inch extension with a universal joint. I got uh, 8 and 10 millimeter sockets, another smaller extension, quarter inch wrench. I used a uh, 15 millimeter for the secondary clutch bolt along with my Dewalt impact. And then for cleaning the clutches I used brake cleaner and a scuff pad. Actually, I also used um, a soft hammer, a rubber hammer, on, the, on parts of the, the job, too. Okay, guys, so your clutch and your belt is right there behind that cover, okay? To help you have a little more access here, you can uh, take your dump bed, unhook the shock, and it'll tip straight up in the air. Gives you a little more room to work under here. First thing you got to do is you're going to have to remove this air cleaner box. It has three bolts holding it on. You've got an air intake going to your throttle body. You've got another hose right here, a smaller one. And then you have your air intake right here that goes up into the cab. You can unbolt these and then move your, your box back to be able to get access to, to this hose right here. It's just held on with a clamp. It comes off pretty easily. Then you want to move this whole air box out of your way. That's going to allow you to be able to get this cover off. Without that out of the way, this cover don't come off. Another thing you might want to do is take off your, your grease cert right there. That will help get this cover because it's really tight right here. So it might help get that uh, cover off. So you got uh, bolts all the way around this cover. A eight millimeter socket takes those off. I like to use a long extension and a universal joint. Some of these are, are pretty difficult to, to get on straight on. But once you get all the bolts out, you can pull that cover off. So once the cover's off, you can see the, the, the clutches and the belt and your first step is to remove the belt now I watched a video that said unbolt the or loosen the bolt on the, the secondary clutch and your secondary clutch will, will kind of come apart and you can slide your belt off well that's not the case 
on this 2013. Uh, mine has got a spring back there and a snap clip. Uh, it's not going to move on, on just unbolting it. So I don't know if they changed something, but a 2013, uh, I just kind of, I just pried the belt up and around the secondary. So here's a, a side view of the secondary clutch to give you kind of a visual. Uh, there's a, a spring inside here. Uh, it's held in by a, a clip in the back, a big C clip. And you can see here, this is the shape of it. Uh, your belt rides in there and it opens up uh, with uh, the speed that the, the belt is turning. Anyway, uh, to open this thing up, the, I believe the 13 to 15 Rangers have a sealed secondary clutch, which means there's no hole on the front of it to use a clutch tool or a pry tool to, to help open up the secondary clutch. So the belt drops down inside there, which makes it easier to, to roll the, the belt um, off the clutches. So on this type of clutch, uh, really the only uh, way that I've seen that you can do it is to actually get in here with something and, and, and and pry it open. Now I used a pry bar and um, a, a cloth because you, you want to be real careful guys. This is aluminum. Uh, if you get a sharp thing uh, pushing on this aluminum you can scratch it or dent it and you really want to be careful because it is aluminum. Um, you don't want to break your, your secondary clutch. Prying real hard on on it so you just want to pry enough to get the belt to slide down into the into the clutch a little bit which allows you to spin the the belt off okay so to get this belt off i've seen many different ways i'm going to give this uh pry in the secondary open a try uh, I got a pry bar with a cloth on it. You want to be very careful, guys. You don't damage your aluminum secondary, the surface of it, because it could easily be done because it's aluminum. I'm going to stick the bar in here with the cloth on it and just try to open up the secondary a little bit. Um, you want to avoid, I guess you want to avoid these areas right here. There's two, like, dimple areas. Um, you want to avoid those on each side because apparently that's a weak part of the secondary. So I'm just going to stick my pry bar in here and just open it up and let the, the belt fall inside the inside the or down into the secondary. And it's not easy. I've got a big pry bar here and it's still not opening up very easily. You just need it, the belt to go down into the secondary a little bit to help you roll the belt off. And there we go guys, that's how you do it. Most of the videos on YouTube, actually all the videos I've seen, people are, are showing this on a secondary clutch with a little hole right here that allows you to relieve the spring pressure on there and it opens up the secondary. Here's a little drawing here of the secondary clutch. And it's two pieces 
they're shaped like this. There's a spring right here and there's a clip on there that holds that and this spring holds these two pieces together. It's very stiff, very stiff, um, really hard to, to actually move by hand. I've seen others um, remove the, the primary clutch and that you can remove the belt that way too but you got to have a special puller and they don't always come out real real nice guys really easy and then you also you got to torque them back down to uh, the specified torque but um, I did watch a video with a 16 Ranger and apparently all you got to do is pull the bolt off there is no spring back there you just loosen the bolt up and that um, allows the secondary clutch to open up and then you can take the belt off but I am going to add a, a warning to this uh, section of the video when you're tr trying to pry your belt off be real careful with your fingers guys because um, you could easily get your fingers pinched while you're trying to turn this and try to roll that belt off and that would make for a really bad day so just uh, be aware of where your fingers are when you're rolling this belt off. Okay, so once you get your belt off, uh, you can pull the secondary off and take that completely off because it just unbolts. It'll slide right off the shaft. Um, then you want to you wanna look at all your clutch surfaces, make sure there's nothing wrong um, on that end. And then you have to, to prep that surface with uh, cleaning it with some some brake cleaner and using a, a scuff pad to scuff up all the area or all the faces of the clutches. Uh, you do that so when your new belt goes on it's got a little bit of friction to kind of you know break the belt in. That's, that's why you scuff it up. It's an important step if you're installing a new belt. If you got your old belt and you're putting it back on, you don't have to do that, but uh, new belt, you got to kind of break it in that way. So once you get everything scuffed and cleaned really good, you can put your secondary back on, secondary clutch back on, get the, the belt slid over. Okay, so installing the belt, same as taking it off. Gonna pry it. First, you gotta work the belt on, kinda get it tight, then pry the secondaries open, or the secondary open again, and then that's gonna help you roll the belt back on. It doesn't take much to get her uh, ride back on and then you want to you want to turn the clutch to make sure the clutch or the belt is, is riding up onto the clutch and not stuck down inside the secondary uh, then you can go ahead and tighten up your secondary bolt I'm not positive on the torque but I've heard 45 foot-pounds um, I really just took my electric impact and, and put it on with that uh, what I considered snug. Uh, one thing I would recommend is you inspect the the seal on your cover that goes all the way around. Make sure it's in good shape. You definitely don't want water and stuff getting inside this clutch area. That's just going to cause you to slip and just cause all kinds of trouble. So you, need, you want a good seal on this box. So once you get your your belt installed you can put everything back together you're ready to go alrighty guys out and about testing the, the new belt and it's working awesome it's uh, much much better much smoother taking off uh, the belt was, was really horrible on this thing 
Um, the guy said he took it off and cleaned it and everything, but you know, that ain't good enough. When you wreck the belt, you wreck the belt. Uh, it was probably due to, you know, driver air. You know, they should have been in low range and they were in high range and they were probably slipping the belt or something. Uh, maybe a lot of, lot of slow speed driving in uh, high range or something. Whatever it was, that the belt was junk because uh, this new belt uh, really, really has helped it. So I'm happy with it, guys. Well, this is the belt uh, that I used in the video, guys. It's a Gates G-Force. And the whole reason I went with this belt was when I had my, my older 6x6, I replaced the belt with one of these G-Force belts. They're not the most expensive belt. So if you go by price-wise, they're probably kind of a medium belt. But I was really happy with the performance that uh, I got with that belt on that older Ranger. Um, even pulling my back blade and grating, uh, that's, that's pretty hard on, on the clutch and belt. And um, this belt handled it no problem. So that's kind of why I went back to this belt. Uh, Gates does have higher performance belts. Uh, they're a lot more money though, but um, so far guys, real happy with this. I'm going to get another one of these G-Force uh, belts for my, my new 6x6 that I got because like I said, uh, real happy with, with how they feel and uh, how they're working so far. Uh, hopefully this video will help some people out there. Um, I'll, I guess I'll see you guys.